Peter Norris, who, uh, who we go back many years, when many years, the yeah. electronic organ magazine show yeah, on Manx Radio. Yes, indeed. Peter, it's great to see this. I, I mean, all the times I've been here, it's never been in, in use. Uh, it's because the it's the best it's a secret. kept secret in the Isle of Man. This, of course, normally is not out here on display. It lives in a cupboard behind us. Yeah. Um, and when it was acquired by the Manx government and shipped to the Isle of Man, there was some question as to where it was eventually going to be. The Gaiety was mentioned in the place. Well, the Gaiety was uh, an original awesome. thought. I think somebody went round on the Saturday conducted tour that they have and um, said, have you got an organ? And they were shown this little home plug-in, which was in the, in the orchestra pit. Uh, and uh, it, 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 they looked at this and they thought, well, that's, 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 it's a toy, really. Now, somebody in the audience apparently uh, had knew of Alan Hickling, who had rescued this instrument and put it into his stately home, uh, a place called Dormston House. And my first knowledge of the Dormston House where it's uh, was when uh, I got some recordings, which I used to use in the days. Yes. yes. <laughs> Your radio days. That's right. And um, we uh, used to feature the Dormston House Wurlitzer. Uh, Alan used to get um, Brian Sharp to do Christmas concerts. And in fact, in the day, I had some great big 12-inch reel-to-reel uh, tapes. Uh, sadly, when the organ show was rested, these uh, tapes I preserved for many years, but sadly, uh, when taped... Uh, Don't tell me they got wiped. Wet, uh, no, they got thrown away. Thrown away? Sadly, oh. they got thrown away. And, Sad. of course, Manx Radio had moved on, and it was all done with computers yeah. rather than with with uh, recording yeah. uh, players, sure. record players and stuff. So uh, all the stuff which I... In fact, I've got a hatchet full of uh, the old uh, 33 and a You're going to digitise them at some time. Don't I? Well, I don't have the time, unfortunately. Uh, no. Let's get back to this, because, yeah. I mean, um, well, it's a, the iconic name, of course. In terms of, well, it's, is, is this a great one, a good one, or, or, the, or the same? It's, or? it's quite a small one. Right. This instrument here, as you can see, has two keyboards, mm -hmm. so that's a two-manual instrument. In the chambers behind us, where there are two chambers, uh, there are five ranks of pipes in each chamber. The one on the left is the accompaniment chamber, and the one on the right is the solo chamber. So that has all the strident voices in it. Um, and the thing that makes the world is a somewhat different from a conventional pipe orb is that it is controlled remotely. Uh, round the back there is an air supply and there are two cables which take the signals from the keys when you close a contact that sends a signal down the wire and it affects a relay a little valve opens, bigger valves open and the pipe will speak. Unlike a conventional uh, classical organ where the control of the, uh, of the pipes is directly linked to the console which is built so in amongst the pipes. Very high tech in its day then. Yeah. This was a quite remarkable instrument in its day yeah. because it was designed by a gentleman called Robert Hope Jones who uh, was uh, a designer, and he worked perfecting what he called a unit orchestra, because the idea was that instead of employing a group of musicians to accompany, that it could be achieved by somebody playing this instrument, which as well as having the pipes the pipes could be affected 
uh, with a tremulant by rattling the the the, the, the chambers where the, where the air is stored. Yeah. It, they they vibrate, so you get a tremulant sound, which is unlike the sound that you get out of a classical organ. And would you see these in cinemas as well? Would that this thing would come up and down in its day? Indeed, or? yes. And in fact, in the Isle of Man, we had two, not Wurlitzers, but we had two Compton organs. There was one in the Regal Cinema in Victoria Street, and the other was in the Strand Cinema in the, in the, the main shopping arcade. Uh, and um, they worked in a slightly different way, but had a similar sort of layout. Well, we've been watching you uh, playing this thing just now, and, and uh, there's lots of things to know about it. Is, is it something you, you're trying to get, obviously get the word out there that this exists? Do you want to get people to try it out, to take it up, or just to come along for concerts? Well, no. I mean, I mean, the idea of, of this morning is that since Peter J uh, took o Peter Jordan took over the, the the handle of the friends of the well, it's sir. Uh, he um, has been proactive in uh, raising awareness that this thing exists, mm. because, as I said, normally it's, covered. <laughs> it's it's yeah. it's it's the best kept secret in the Isle of Man. Normally, the bottom of the stairs are, are shut it off, yeah. uh, and uh, the room is not. It is used, or it was being used on the second Tuesday afternoon. Arrangements were made. Uh, that it could be dragged out, and anybody who was interested to come and see it, to listen to it, to understand about the workings of it, could in fact come along and be introduced to it. This morning is a bit different because through 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 Peter's uh, work, open work, day, uh, we have, yeah. we are having an open day. Yes, and so pe if people want more information about this, do they can find it online, or I mean, where where do they go? Well, they can they can contact. Peter Jordan, mm -hmm. 820949, Peter Jordan, mm -hmm. who is, if you like, the, the named person who yeah. is doing the publicity for yeah. the Friends. Well, thank you for talking to us today. It's been an eye-opener to, to know this is all here. I know there's some bits on the, on the wall that also remind you about it, but really, use it and not lose it, really, I suppose. It's, it's well, I mean, the, the Manx government not only acquired it, but of course they've had it completely restored. Mm. If you look at the poster over there, you'll see a white instrument with three manuals on, and in fact the guy who, who rescued it out of the city cinema in Leicester butchered it and added a third manual oh. and put a, a synthesizer on it and a digital reverb so and all. This has been put back. So this has been restored by uh, Len Rawl, a, a very experienced builder of and restorer of these type of instruments. It's been put back to the way it originally was. Now this has taken a long time and it has cost a considerable amount of taxpayers' money to achieve what is here. This is as it was, as it, as it came out of the world at factory all those years ago. I mean, it's pushing 90 years old. And considering the age of it, it is quite a remarkable bit of kit, because not only does it have 10 ranks of pipes, it's got a xylophone, which plays, you know, just the same way. <clears throat> and so you, you link that by pressing some tabs down and you can you can actually play the pipes and other things as well it's got drums it's got cymbals it's got hooters and if you are very skilled of course you can utilize all these in the course of playing the instrument i'm a greenhorn i am just at 84 nudging into the trying to learn something about the playing of the instrument but it is complex, but it is a challenge, and it should be used.